bedroom to the cottage for years. Yeah, so there's, they would have a chamber, a large chamber or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, we're... How are you doing, So, yeah. so inter introduce uh, Pastor here. Okay, um, so uh, Pastor Chico is their, uh, our pastor came up from California. San Diego. There you go. Yeah. From Chico. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting we're getting our deck ready for winter. We go on vacation next week, so oh. we don't want to get caught if it's the early snow. So. Yeah. Mm. And so um, uh, you've been here for two. And June and a half. of twenty one. Yeah. We got so, here. Yeah. So third. Yeah. This will be our third winter. Uh -huh. We measure things by winter around. Here. Yeah, that's right. That's From right. San Diego to. That's how you <laughs> earn your stripes here. By <laughs> so let me yeah. give a let me. So I, I, was, did, uh, I was just trying to share with the with the group here, um, and I I've, I've heard it in Chico's sermons. There's a, there's a, something special about this this place, this community, this valley, you know, that is it's got God's providence and blessing all over it. You know, the things that have happened. And you were touching base with uh, with uh, Kimiko and uh, ministries that you know, come from this, and, and your guys. They didn't know when we passed that place, the Stonewater Ranch, the mm -hmm. dynamics. That's I mentioned what, that, yeah. 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 Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So, give us a give us a little bit of, of two minutes of your story, how God brought you here, and then I'll I'll go back into sure. some of the past history. Yeah. Um, I got saved as a college student down in a church in uh, Escondido, which is North San Diego County. Yeah. A uh, church of about 4,000, just a small little country church down there. <laughs> and went on staff two years later, and they kind of never left serving the Lord from there. And uh, uh, planted a church out of that church in my hometown, and started with 30 folks and grew to about 1,500. And then uh, 19 years into the marriage, my wife decided she was done. Mm. And uh, funny thing happens, yeah. churches don't like pastors getting a mm. divorce. Bible doesn't like that either, <coughs> by the way. <laughs> so, um, took a six year hiatus. My wife at the time went through with her plans and mm -hmm. um, uh, worked in different ministries, serving homeless and drug and alcohol recovery. And uh, through that process, uh, uh, met a lady and we got remarried. And so together we have five kids and four grandkids. Uh, six years um, after uh, leaving, uh, serving uh, the church that I had been at for 16 years, I told uh, Jenny, my wife, and I said, I'm, I'm ready to get back uh, to pastoring. It's what I was created to do and what's in my heart. And so we started looking around, and this was the furthest place from uh, my mind. <laughs> um, but I showed my wife. Yeah, I showed my wife. Well, my experience had been in large churches. I got saved in a large church, planted a church. When I left, it was 1,500 people. And um, so that was my experience. And so I started looking around in that arena and uh, to be executive pastor, something like that. And um, she found this little church. And it, it literally, the, the front picture of the packet was a tractor pushing snow in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. yeah, you know, I'm and, there. Did you automatically say, Lord, I'm so not going there. That <laughs> stayed in my file, and um, but months went by, and I got down to the final group uh, four different times and passed over. So I said, okay, Lord, what do you want? And it was a Sunday afternoon, and I opened up that file, and here's the one thing that's left. So oh, man. I, and I look, and I noticed the date. It was the last day to turn in an application. So I sent an application in. I was applicant number sixty-seven of sixty-seven, and uh, it was during COVID. So it's a long process. There were Zoom interviews, and then uh, they brought us up. And it's uh, long story short, it's been a blessing to be here. A uh, little different taste. Uh, learned lots of things about um, earning your stripes here. And, Folks around here don't care that much where you've been. Uh, everybody hears from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. There's a, only a couple families that claim that they have been born and raised here, but everybody else are here is from somewhere else. And so, um, folks care most most about do you, do you care about other people? 
Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a special place where uh, it's amazing to watch community, believer, unbeliever, just community, uh, develop in this uh, valley. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have just been blessed to be here. Uh, part of the goal was to find something a little different and so I could enter a doctoral program. So I've done that. And, uh, but we've been blessed to just be pastor here and get back to the, it, it's not, it's just loving people. You know, it's a, we're, we're a one-horse town here, uh, so I don't have any other full-time staff. It's just me. My wife's the office manager mm -hmm. and cleans the church, mm -hmm. and um, we have a maintenance guy over there that lives in that cottage with his family, and we just take care of the people that God calls here. To, and we have quite a few folks that come through, uh, visitors, uh, we call them part-timers in the valley, uh, West Side Money. But it has to be spent somewhere. <laughs> so, Let them spend it. Uh, there's second homes here, quite a few of them, and and so the congregations, you know, has a steady of about 130 now, and then we can get to 170 if everybody's in town, or we can be 60 if everybody's out of town. So it just really depends. But um, church has been here uh, formed in 1941. Church history. Yeah, and that's what, let's take that as a segue. Oh, well, wait, that? let me take it as a quick segue. Yeah. We were here in June of 22, so it would have been a year it after you were here. First, one of, yeah. I don't know if it was one of his first times, but well, I remember dad jokes. Well, yeah, so so he, he said, okay, we're going to have some dad jokes. And anyways, a few guys get up, and because and, he says it was around Father's Day. And so at the end of the time, Jason, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but he's like, I don't get it. None of these jokes were about dads. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that was the best dad joke ever. <laughs> Master class. Hey, this is weird, man. There's no jokes about dads, but a lot of other things. We were there. You guys were out here. So uh, really quickly, um, Otto Sather, that name, he was born in 1921 and died in 2018. His family had a chicken farm, a big farm out in the Stanwood area. And uh, when World War II started, instead of being drafted, they asked him and his brother, they wanted him to stay and farm the chickens. They had a big poultry farm. At the age of 30, he experienced a conversion. And that's an amazing story. I'm not going to go into the details. And a couple years later, God called him into ministry. He went into, uh, did an apprenticeship at a church in Marysville. And then he sold his part of that farm to come and take this call over here. At that time, they didn't even have, I don't think they had that church building. They what, were meeting at, what uh, year was that? across you know? the river at the old schoolhouse where the Grunewald Guild now has their uh, bookstore, or their uh, library. And uh, but he he sold his place and they moved here and he funded about half of his own salary. He said, "I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be a full time pastor." They said, "We can only give you this much." He said, "I'm committed to being a full time pastor, committed to growing the church, and I'm going to uh, work for what they were able to give him." And so they made it work. Uh, Twenty six years here. Uh, like I said, my dad was, uh, it would have been in 1959 when he was driving by this road, that bridge used to work, uh, with his pops, who is not a Christian, no Christian background, and he's driving by, he's seeing people mill outside from that little Burgess Hall, which was a church back in the day, and the Spirit of God said to him, if you want to be happy, you need to be with those people. And so that's when he showed up, the, like another Sunday after Easter Sunday or whatever. Otto took him down into the basement of the Burgess Hall and knelt with him, and he prayed to receive Christ. Mm -hmm. um, one of the interesting things about Otto's story is that he was, um, that was my dad really quick. Hey, Dad, we're at Plain <laughs> Community Church. Okay. Speaking of the dad. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. We probably won't be here. I'll, I'll let you know when we leave. All right. Why don't you stay at Leavenworth? We'll meet you at the property. That's probably the smartest thing. Okay? Don't come here. <laughs> Just stay at the property. Okay. So, um... But God told him to come here. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so he's driving by. He, he prays to receive Christ. Um, where was I at? Oh, the story of this building. So Otto worked with the pillars, those early pioneer and the and the Burgess, you know, the new all those those early families. The amazing thing from a pastor's perspective, he was never seen as being on the inside of this community, even after 26 years, because it's a small, insular, I mean, these are pioneers, they're the ones that brought him in, you know, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so, at, he had, there was a difference of opinion on if they should get a mortgage for this building, or if they should pay as they go. I don't know, there was a doctor that worked in Wenatchee, who was uh, also came to the church here, who was willing to uh, help finish, because they had raised some funds, but not everything. But he didn't tell the elders. They ended up having a difference of agreement because he wanted to raise the money before they built. And so that was part of the parting of ways after 26 years of ministry. But there are uh, just so many stories of, of uh, you know, they lived in that little parsonage. We're going to walk across the... Do you want to take us in the building at all? Can we see I anything? can open doors and you can do it. Or well, do you guys want to see anything or is it good enough to be outside? Do you want to see anything? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Can Jason, we, what's the significance of the basement? Well, that's just where he went and prayed with... <laughs> with Only it wouldn't have been over there. It actually was right here. Yeah, it was facing this way. Oh, really? It moved? Yeah, they moved it. Mm. Yeah, they moved the basement? Yeah, no, they uh, moved the building, a, that whole building. We busted a pipe, um, and so we had to, plans aren't really well drawn, so we had to dig it to try to find it, um, and so when we did, we found the um, foundation. Oh, really? It's actually right here. Yeah. Wow. This is where the building sat, and that building was built in 1944. The church was started in 41, gotcha. and then, um, so what they decided to do, this this was built in the early 70s, I think. Um, they just took the building, built a new foundation, and turned it. Actually, they built this first right next to it. And you you can, if you know anything about snow, and uh, it just flew. And it crashed into the basement of Burgess Hall and went right through the windows. So the, it took them three years to get enough money to flip the building so they built it and moved it over there so that is the original building okay. now it's our it's kind of our ed church. building yeah 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 so and then we go all the way to those sheds over there that's our uh, we're the only pantry in uh, we call this upper valley so there's there's a pantry down in leavenworth but, but for the folks up here that don't have enough to you know make it through the week for, for food scarcity issues so that that building out there the purple building is the pantry so so what i'd like them to see is the sanctuary and then i'd like to walk out on the bridge and look at the uh baptismal what what area. year did Otto come over here he was uh 30 he, let me see he was born in 19 let's see he said 20 something so i'm gonna 1921, he was 34 when going to be open in case when you guys come back and need to use facilities. I imagine some of this wood is uh, part of what they logged, and yeah, all the it was all logged here, all just built right here on top. Yeah. The original building ends with the pillars, and then in the nineties they expanded and added that little section over there. I've got old blueprint, blueprints from this building that were part of Otto's that stuff. It's so interesting. So he only, he, he um, I don't think he preached or, or spent much time after it was built. It was kind of, that was the, the building was built, but it, this community shrinks in the wintertime, right? And then it really grows in the summer. So you guys meet out, outside in the tent. We started meeting in the tent because of COVID. And after that was my first summer here, so that was more requirement. 
Um, and then we just realized, well, wait a minute. We, we now have this 40 by 60 tent in this beautiful place. So let's, so now we do it just for eight weeks in the summer. It's called Summer Sundays. And so everybody just brings a beach chair and we just meet in the tent. Uh, That's kind of, kind of nice. Yeah. The sound people hate it. So. <laughs> That's our sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> Max, Max, so. <laughs> he doesn't like you as much. Guys, I would like to. I would like to pray for our brother, though. Um, I can't do because <laughs> <laughs> because I, I look Anita, Danica, Peter. I, I've got so many worldwide impact that's come out of this place yeah. just in the. The circle of, t of people that I know, and I just want to pray the same for for you and and for the the work here. So I'll, I'll pray. Um, <sighs> Heavenly Father, um, I want to thank you for uh, small churches. I want to thank you for faithful pastors. I want to thank you. Named Otto and Betty Sather and Chico and Jenny and and I want to thank you for your church that you are building and I praise you for your workmanship here. I pray that uh, you would continue to establish the work of Chico's hands and you would bless him and, and may the gospel, the grace of Jesus Christ, pour out into this place. And we pray that young men like my dad and young women would um, be. Uh, the breath of your spirit would draw them to this place, uh, that they would come to know Jesus Christ. And uh, we just commit the work of, uh, of your, your work here uh, and to your glory and uh, pray for Chico as he is faithful in doing that. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, man. Okay, let's go to the bridge yep. and, and look at the... I'll leave the church open if you guys need the restroom or something. I'll come back and lock it up. Oh, thank so you. Thanks you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, we are working through the Gospel of Mark. And so... We're, we, we, so I challenge them to read the Gospel of Mark in one sentence. So this is the time it took... Okay, that explains the 32 minutes to an hour and 50. Yeah, so some are a little slower. Yeah. So it was just a, a challenge, to, and then the post it up here. So. We're heading over to the bridge. We're going to go to the bridge. <laughs> That's awesome. There's a kids, one tractors, and then dad's tractor. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> the maintenance man's kids. Yeah, the maintenance man's tractor. You watch the dad, they're going and they're going. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Is that, that, I bet that's what they use for the snow, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. <laughs> This is part of the apple juice pipeline. Uh, this is uh, some irrigation pipe. Wait, there's juice in there? And uh, it connects. There's a, there's a, a irrigation pipe on the upper, right up, up above 
the Ponderosa Lodge, you know, 